This is You've Got a Friend in Me. I want to welcome you to worship today. It's so good to gather with you always. Um, we are um, making our way through a sermon series about friendship. So I hope sometime um, in these last couple weeks, maybe today, you have reconnected with a friend or maybe made a new friend or thought about what it means to just kind of walk around the earth as a friend. It's such a gift. So today we'll continue that celebration of friendship. We're also going to have communion today. And so this is kind of just a heads up. Um, you might want to prepare um, a, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice. It doesn't have to be juice. It can also be water. Something that you can share communion this morning uh, in your home. Welcome to worship. Um, even though we are not in the same space, we are connected by the love of God. And so we are in many ways friends. Welcome.
friends. This is our favorite time of the week. Absolutely. Children's time. I'm Miss Alice and this is... And I'm Pastor Cindy and we love getting together on Sunday morning and, and talking with you. We are having this um, time, these last couple of weeks, we've been talking about friends and it has been delicious to talk about friends. Friends right? are so important in our lives. Absolutely. And Miss Alice and I are friends. Mm -hmm. And so every Sunday, you know, when we do this, it's kind of a celebration that we get to share our it lives is. together. It really is. And Jesus called us friends. And so we've just been exploring all of this. I want to tell you something about Jesus. When he said he was our friend and he talked all about friends, he added something special to friendship. He knew that we would be connected to people that uh -huh. we loved and cared about. He knew that would be wonderful. But he also believed that when we became friends, that all the good stuff that we did, our light would go out into the world. We would become friends, and then we would become friends to the world. Right. Just keeps multiplying and multiplying. Keep getting bigger and bigger. He said, you are the light of the world. And he meant you and you and everybody who's watching today, that as Jesus loves us, our light would go out. So we have some lights and we're just gonna kind of play around with ways that we can be friends and send the light of Jesus into the world. So I'm thinking, hmm, I am thinking we could be, we could encourage our teacher at school or preschool. We, we could. could be a friend, to, that would be a little light. We could encourage a friend who's having a bad day and just may need some encouraging words. Mm -hmm. If you are in school and you go into the lunchroom, you could be a friend to the people who work in the lunchroom. Oh, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. If you ride a school bus, you could be a friend to the school bus driver. Absolutely, absolutely. In your neighborhood, if maybe there's somebody elderly in your neighborhood, you could be a friend to them and encourage them. If you play on a sports team, maybe soccer, maybe baseball, softball, you could be a friend to your coaches. You could ask your adult, your mom or your dad, if there's a nursing home or a place nearby where there are older people who mm -hmm. live, and you could color a picture and drop it off and just say, friend, have a nice day, and drop it off for somebody. Oh, they would love that. That would be cool. If you're in the grocery store, maybe, and somebody needs help reaching something, you may, if you can't reach it, you could ask, get some help and be a friend to that person. Yep, you could be a friend like that. And you know, one of the things we do at the church, we have a little pantry and there's food in the little pantry because we want to be friends to our neighbors who need food. So you could ask your mom or dad if you could bring some food for the little pantry. Some of you are alkalites. You bring the light of Christ into the church and that's being a friend to all the people in the church. They look forward to seeing you do that. All right, Alice, I'm going to do a selfish one. Okay. You could send a picture to your pastor, me, or to Pastor Trevor, and that would be oh. a light in our lives. You could join us at Sunday School Zoom and be a light to all your friends on Zoom. So, look, if we do all of these pretty soon, you start to light things up you discover how much we can change the world by loving the way Jesus did, by making friends everywhere we go, um, by being people who love and encourage other people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a super thing. And I wanna pray about that. So will you join me in prayer? Yes. And we're gonna do this the way we do this and then I'll say some words and Alice is gonna repeat them and hopefully you'll repeat them with Alice. So join me in prayer. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you for all that you do for us. For all that you do for us. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our friends. That we get to share our lives with them. That we get to share our lives with them. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. Who taught us. Who taught us. That friendship isn't just for us. That friendship isn't just for us. But it's meant to be shared with the world. But it's meant to be shared with the world. We pray, we pray that we can, that we can make your light shine, that make your light shine all around the world, all around the world. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you in Sunday school on Zoom. Right after service, you can ask uh, your uh, adult to text Trevor and he'll give you the information to link on. So you, my friends, are little lights in the world. And uh, we're excited about that. Have a great week. Bye-bye. This morning we have several different passages uh, to read from Scripture. First comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Six days of creation and the Sabbath. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the, deep, the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. The next reading comes from Psalm 27, verse 1 triumphant song of the confidence of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Third scripture comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Next, later in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus, the light of the world. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then finally, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter five, verses 14 and 15. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. May God add God's blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of scripture. Amen. In 1975, I worked at the University of Iowa Hospital. Dave and I were newly married. We had just moved to Iowa City. We lived in a tiny little apartment on Van Buren Street. And Dave was in school, and I worked um, as a ward clerk at the hospital on the 3 to 11 shift. It was kind of a stressful time in our lives, adjusting to all these changes. Um, the floor I worked in in the hospital was ENT, ear, nose, and throat. And this being the University of Iowa, um, our patients were the sickest of the sick in Iowa. Um, many of them had cancer. And in those days, cancer and cancer treatments were much more primitive than the kinds of things that we do now. Um, our area of the hospital was old and the ward seemed to be kind of a little bit dingy and dimly lit. It all felt pretty hopeless. Um, all, and all of this would have been kind of too grim to take, um, except for one person, one person named Sarah. She was a nurse. There were lots and lots of good nurses and doctors and um, nursing assistants on this floor, a lot of really competent people, but she was exceptional. When she entered a room, she entered in with all of her expertise and her competence, but she also came in with something else. She brought light into the room, and it was like the light of her soul. She seemed to see every person, acknowledge every person, accept every person, give hope to every person. And she gave something of herself to everybody. It wasn't just the patients. Um, the staff felt this too, including me. If she was working on the shift that I was on, um, we all felt a sense of security and safety. We would be all right. She was there. Whatever happened that night, um, it would be okay. She brought light. In 2006, I traveled to South Carolina with four African-American people and one white woman. I was taking a class in seminary. Um, 
that took us through the South um, when we were exploring the history of the African-American experience, what slavery had meant. We flew to Charleston and then we spent six days traveling in a minivan, kind of squish in a minivan, all of us, um, sharing every meal together. We had lots and lots of great conversations about our lives and race and faith. And it was a great experience. But again, there was one person who made this exceptional. There was a person, I'm gonna call her Mika, who was on the trip and um, everywhere we went, she would pause and talk with people, discovering what was happening in their lives and encouraging them. Um, she did this with the woman she sat next to on the plane. This happened when we encountered a young man who was our waiter in one of the restaurants. Um, there was a time when we visited an old man who was an artist in Charleston. And again, here she was um, really, um, I don't know, opening herself to their lives. It's a little bit hard to explain what she did, but she offered encouragement and, and she gave something of herself. Like the nurse, she brought light into all of these experiences. When I think of friendship and I think of our scripture for today, I think of these two women. They carried the light of Christ with them and they offered it to those around them. Will you pray with me? Lord, as we read these scriptures today, open them to us. Let our hearts break open and your light, your light flow in. Um, help us to see again what it means to be friends with Christ and friends with one another. Help us by reading these scriptures, by living close to you, help us to renew hope in the world. The world desperately needs hope. Look kindly on this preacher and everyone who's gathered wherever and however we've gathered for worship today. Let our thoughts, let our lives be acceptable to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been talking about friendship for the last um, two weeks. And two weeks ago, we looked at John 15 when Jesus said, I have called you friends. And we've talked about friendship and what it means, this mutual caring for one another. God's designed us to do that. In our culture today in the United States, we define friend as someone who's there for us and we're there for them. We tend to think of friendship in our culture as two people or a small group of people um, caring for one another. We uh, regard friendship as something close and personal um, and really in a lot of ways, the property of the, the people in, who are part of it. In Jesus' day, the definition of friendship, the understanding of what friendship was, was a bit broader. It was a little different. It meant caring for one another for sure, but it was also understood that when people became friends, they developed a character of friendship. It's almost like um, if you're gonna become a musician, you have to practice music. Well, it was like practicing friendship in a relationship developed them into people who were friends. That character that they developed would extend beyond their personal relationships. A person who had become a friend would be a friend not only to the individual, uh, their, their personal friend, but they would be a friend in the world to the people that they encountered. Friendship became like a lantern in their soul and the light from that lantern would inevitably shine out into the world around them. That's a pretty remarkable thing. Take that in for a minute. To be a friend meant to be a friend to the world. When Jesus said to his disciples, I have called you friends, he didn't just mean, hey, let's hang out together. He meant through our friendship, we will grow in all the qualities of friendship. All those qualities, acceptance, compassion, forgiveness, mercy, encouragement, support, all of those things that make up friendship. And as we become stronger friends, we will live in friendship to everyone we meet. When you think about Jesus, who poured himself into the world, um, that seems sort of obvious, doesn't it? That Jesus wouldn't hoard friendship, would, friendship wouldn't be just for him, but that friendship would be more than his personal possession. Friendship was more, uh, one more way that he would give himself away to the world. Friendship was a light to the world, and the scriptures for today are all about light. 
I hope you have the scriptures in front of you. If you don't, if you ever want to just get the scriptures, we send them out via email or actually in snail mail too. So if you'd ever like to have them ahead of time, contact the church and we can make sure that you get them. Um, if you, you can look them up on your phone app too, if you want to, or just listen because these scriptures are so wonderful and so delightful. I want to go through them again. Almost every book of the Bible makes reference to light. Um, it just seems to flow through scripture all the way. It's as though the way light moves through scripture is really symbolic of the way the love of God has moved through all of humanity, through all time. Genesis 1, that's our first reading for today. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light and God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. Things began in darkness, according to the scripture. And you know how scary darkness can be. If nothing else, we try to move around in darkness. We bump into stuff. We hurt ourselves and we feel afraid. And this darkness wasn't just the absence of light. It represents confusion and chaos and uncertainty and hopelessness. There was a darkness about that hospital ward where I worked that I described. And there was certainly a darkness about the evil of racism that we encountered in the South. And what does God do? God creates light. God lets us see. God lets us find our way. The next reading is from Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Um, of whom shall I be afraid? In this scripture, light becomes something we can trust. God not only created light, God is light. And when we find our way forward, we're being led by God. The next reading comes from John 1, and it's verses 1 through 5, and I love this reading. And um, tell somebody to read this at my funeral, because these words are that important to me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. See, aren't they beautiful words? Christ brings this light to us. That's what the scripture says. And this light is life for all people. Light and life become synonymous here. Some of you may be planting your gardens this spring, and what will those flowers and vegetables need to grow? They will need light. There is energy and warmth in light. And it's almost as though in this scripture, science and holiness kind of come together and sort of become one. I love that. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. The light is more than just photon, photons bumping together. That's what a scientist would tell us. That's what generates light. But this light is the hope in the darkness of uncertainty. Pretty remarkable. Well, the next reading is from um, John 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, to his disciples, saying, and this is what Jesus said about himself, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And now Jesus, that light shifts, and Jesus is the light, but now Jesus says if we follow Jesus, we will have the light, that he is the light. And one last scripture, Matthew 5, verses 14 to 15. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. I remember the first time I read that last scripture, the one from Matthew. It says, you are the light of the world, and Jesus is talking to the people around him. Now, just in the previous scripture, it had said that Jesus was the light of the world. And when I read this one in Matthew, I always thought it was a typo. I thought, no, Jesus, you've got that wrong. You are the light of the world. 
But this scripture would indicate that Jesus has handed that light to us. The light has come from God at the beginning of time, flowed throughout all of history, and entered into human life through Christ. And then Christ passed it on to us. In our friendship with Jesus, as we know him and grow in compassion and mercy, light flows out from us into the world, into the lives of others. It's pretty amazing to think of that, don't you? This whole process of light eventually being placed in our hands. Anything that we do that's hurtful, that diminishes other people, that deprives them of light and leaves them hurting in some sort of darkness. It's like living with a bushel basket over our head. And honestly, that's not a good look for anybody. If we know Christ and we have befriended faith, we carry the light of Christ into every room we enter. Can you imagine that for a minute? Every room you walk into, whether that's your kitchen at home, whether it's at your office, uh, maybe it's your classroom, even if you walk into the dentist office, um, or maybe you stop to shop at Hy-Vee, we carry light. And if that's true, then I think this church um, where we gather at the corner of 8th and Grand, this church that draws us all together today, even if we're not all in one place, this church becomes a lighthouse. And it kind of takes your breath away, doesn't it? What that means to the people around it. One summer I worked um, as an intern, a chaplain intern at um, Methodist Hospital. And uh, as interns, as chaplains, we, care, we visited patients and we prayed with them. And um, we also carried a beeper and we were called to the ER if uh, someone came in and, and needed us. But that beeper also went off when there was a code in the hospital, when someone had a cardiac arrest or went into respiratory arrest, when their life was threatened. And when that went off, we were to run to the room um, where that incident was happening. Um, I don't know if you're ever in the hospital when that happens. You know, I, it used to be, and I don't know if they do this anymore, but it used to be that it would, it would sound code blue would go out over the PA system and everyone would know that there was something critical happening in someone's room somewhere. Well, when we would rush to that room, all the medical personnel would come there. There would be EMTs, there would be doctors, there would be nurses, um, and they had practiced this carefully to, you know, to be as efficient as possible in addressing the immediate need. One nurse would immediately start charting what was happening, really second by second, of what kind of treatment and care was being given to the person. The EMTs would go to work. Um, bringing the crash cart, doing what they needed to do, and um, the doctors as well would be busy working. I would show up as this little chaplain intern, and I remember it all happening very scary and fast. And um, I remember just standing in the hallways, trying to stay out of the way because these people were doing such important things. And I would just be praying like crazy and wondering, what should I do? The next day, after the first time that experience, I experienced that, the next day I went to my supervisor and I said to my supervisor, you know, I feel so inadequate. What do I do? What do I bring to this situation? And my supervisor wisely said to me, you bring the light of Christ. And I remember at the time sort of looking at my hands and thinking, you know, really? They, you know, these hands? That's been given to me. A few nights after that, still um, doing this work as a chaplain, I was called to a, a room to visit a patient, um, a young man who had just been diagnosed with HIV AIDS. And it was a horrible, dark time for him. Um, he talked about his diagnosis and how it had changed things. His future, his relationship with his family who did not know he was gay, his job, and, and then add to that, he was very, very sick. So he, he didn't know how his health, what would happen, how that would play out for him. We talked into the night, and out his window, I could see other windows of the hospital, and, and uh, you know, patients were going to sleep and the lights were being shut down, but still in that little room where he and I sat and talked, there was still just light as we talked. I remember then what my supervisor had said, and I remember looking at my hands and um, the light of Christ I was supposed to be carrying and um, the way Christ continually hands us light even when we feel inadequate and empty. What could I say to this young man? The things ahead for him did seem pretty dark, 
But there we were in this pool of light. And I kept thinking maybe he could soak up enough light from that night to carry him forward. You know, maybe like driving in the fog, just enough light to take him far enough forward until he could find more light. He couldn't see miles and miles ahead. He couldn't see how this would play out. But maybe as we talked and as we prayed and had, as that light of Christ did its work, maybe he could gather enough light to live the next hour and the next day and just be present as his life unfolded. What does it mean to carry the light? It means to share Christ with other people. It means we take the bushel off our heads. And honestly, if we confess, we walk around with a bushel on our head all the way, at least metaphorically, all the time. Not looking, not seeing what's happening around us, failing to accept the light and the hope that God gives us all the time. It also means if we're carrying the light that we live in humility and honesty, we don't have all the answers. We can't um, tell other people how to live. Um, we surely don't know enough to judge. We share Christ, not our opinions. We share Christ. We share the hope that's Christ. That means we work toward healing. We walk into a room, we sense what's broken, and we walk toward it because that's what Christ did. That's what Christ did, trying to renew and restore people. We're in that business as well. We look on others with compassion and take that word apart compassion, co-passion. It means that we share in whatever emotions um, that they're going through. And we carry part of the burden for what they're experiencing. Remember all the people Jesus looked on? The hungry, the poor, the mentally ill, the lame, the outcast. Jesus compassioned with them. He carried part of their burden. And we trust that we can't see everything and that we Trust even beyond that, that God can. We offer hope, always hope, because light shines into the future, and we always offer hope, the redeeming, resurrecting grace of God. One last story for you. I read, a, read this story about a little girl named Nora, and she was four years old, and her mom took her to the grocery store because they were getting ready for her birthday party. And um, she was so excited, and so you can picture her maybe riding around in the shopping cart with her mom. They passed an elderly man and Nora yelled, hey, old man, it's my birthday. And the man stopped and he turned around and he smiled at her and he said, well, hello, little lady, how old are you today? And they had a conversation. Nora told him she was four and he introduced himself as Mr. Dan and they talked for a few minutes and he wished her happy birthday and then they went on shopping. A little while later, as they were shopping, Nora said to her mom, and this Nora must have been a pretty precocious little girl, she said to her mom, I want to take, have my picture taken for my birthday with Mr. Dan. So they went back through the aisles and they found Mr. Dan and they took that picture. Nora's mom posted that picture on social media. And, um, uh, and after um, she did that, um, and, and Mr. Dan was just very kind through the whole thing. So she posted the picture on social media and someone on social media identified Dan and privately let Nora's mom know that Dan's wife had died six months earlier and that Dan had been going through a really difficult time. Well, they decided that the birthday celebration should ex for Mr. Dan should extend just beyond a picture in a grocery store. So they took him some snacks and um, they found out where he lived. They took him some snacks and um, and uh, he told them a little bit about his life, that he had been in really um, sad, difficult time. He hadn't been sleeping well lately. And, and Nora's little shout out to him in the grocery store, this extension of friendship of light um, had really meant a great deal to him. And a friendship developed, continued from that. And through that, Dan's grief began to lift. Well, what if that is what it means to be a friend to Jesus Christ? To carry the light of Christ around, to shout out when we see pain, to be a little like Nora. It's light flowing into the world, the light of Christ in us, the light of Christ flowing through us. 
being friends. Thank you, my friends, for being here today. I want to invite you into this time of communion. Please know that in the United Methodist Church, the communion table is open to anyone, anyone who seeks to have a, a closer relationship with Jesus Christ, who seeks the grace of God. So you're all welcome here in your homes today. Um, if you have prepared some cracker or bread or some sort of juice or water, um, elements of the earth, you know, things that are, are gifts that God gives us, that you've brought those to this communion time. That would really be wonderful. Um, we want to be careful, I think, today when we've talked about Jesus and friendship. Um, it'd be easy to make Jesus kind of our buddy, somebody who's on our side. And um, there's a mystery beyond all of this, um, who God is and why God loves us so much. Um, how the, the love, how love pours through our lives and changes us and transforms us. It's far beyond us. And so we come to this table acknowledging that ministry. Join me in Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who had been oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for us. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the body of Christ broken for you, and the cup of heaven poured out for you. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we come together today giving you thanks. Thanks that you are a friend, a friend who is invested in our lives. And may we, like you, oh God, make deep friendships. May we invest in one another's lives. May we put ourselves aside to get to know our friends better, to serve our friends. May we be good friends who help one another grow, who see beyond limitations, and who love the way you love. We come together this morning, God, with a whole bunch of stuff on our heart, right? The good and the bad, and you know all of this. You know our prayers before we even utter a word. So hear us, oh God. Hear the cries of our hearts. And we pray together the way Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
in the room where I recorded our uh, sermon today, I looked around afterwards as I was leaving and I discovered this lantern. You know, after talking about light, I can't help but wonder if maybe this is what we're supposed to do, that we're supposed to walk around kind of with the lantern as we enter each room and sort of holding it up and seeing kind of what's happening and, and knowing that we have the light of Christ to take with us. Maybe you vision this with a flashlight. Maybe you just use the light on your phone. But somehow that light is in us and goes before us, and it's the light of Christ. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and always and give you light. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.